Hi, welcome to another video. So, Google has just launched some pretty cool new upgrades to Chrome, and they're basically trying to launch a new era of Chrome with these features, aiming to compete with things like Comet and Dia. If you remember, Google has been pushing a lot of AI stuff lately, and now they're integrating Gemini directly into Chrome itself. The core idea is that Chrome isn't just a browser anymore. It's becoming a kind of AI-powered assistant for your everyday browsing, which is kind of cool. But the best part is that most of these new features are rolling out to regular users on Mac and Windows in the US, and they're also coming to mobile soon. So it's not just a small update or a gimmick. It's a pretty big shift in how Chrome is positioning itself in the browser wars. And of course, it's Google. So there's always a race to see how quickly they can catch up or leap ahead of the competition. Now let me tell you about what these new features actually are. I'll walk you through each one, show you how they work, and I'll also compare them to what we've seen from other browsers like Comet, Dia, or even Genspark. I'll be honest about what I think is really useful, what feels a bit experimental, and what's just Google flexing its AI muscle. So, let's get into it. But before proceeding, let me tell you about Ninja Chat. Ninja Chat is an all-in-one AI platform where, for just $11 per month, you get access to top AI models like GPT-4.0, Claude 4 Sonnet, and Gemini 2.5 Pro, all in one place. I've been using Gemini for quick research, but what's really cool is their AI playground where you can compare responses from different models side by side. Their mind map generator is a game changer for organizing complex ideas as well. The basic plan gives you 1,000 messages, 30 images, and 5 videos monthly with higher tiers available if you need more. Use my code KING25 for 25% off any plan or KING40 yearly for 40% off annual subscriptions. Check the link in description to try it yourself. now. Back to the video. To start, you can just ask Gemini to clarify complex information on any web page you're reading. For example, if you're going through a technical blog or some documentation and you want a summary or a breakdown, Gemini will do that for you right there. No need to copy and paste into some other chatbot or tool. This is very similar to what we've seen with tools like Claude or even Arc Max, but having it built into Chrome makes it so much more seamless. And it's rolling out to all Mac and Windows desktop users in the US, with English as the set language. It's also coming to mobile soon. On Android, you'll be able to activate Gemini by holding the power button. And on iOS, it'll be built right into the Chrome app as well. For businesses, It'll be available through Google Workspace with enterprise-grade protections, which is great if you care about data security or you're in a corporate environment where privacy is a big deal. One thing that stands out is the new agentic capabilities coming to Gemini and Chrome. It's not available yet, but it should be out soon enough. This is something we've seen in some agentic browsers before, and honestly, it's something I've really wanted to see in Chrome for a while. In the next few months, you'll be able to tell Gemini to handle tedious tasks for you, like booking a haircut or ordering groceries, directly on web pages. You just say what you want, and Gemini will do the work, navigating the web, filling out forms, and clicking buttons, so you can focus on other things. It's very similar to what we've seen with Comet, or the Gein Spark browser, but since it's built into Chrome, it feels much more native. And you can stop at any time, so you're always in control, which is awesome. It's one of those features that could actually save you a lot of time if it works as advertised. But, as with any agentic feature, there's always the question of reliability, and whether it can handle complex flows or just the basic stuff. Another feature worth mentioning is how Gemini in Chrome now works across multiple tabs. So, if you're planning a trip 
and you've got tabs open for flights, hotels, and activities, Gemini can pull all that info together into a single itinerary. It's basically what the DIA browser already does, but now it's in Chrome itself. For people who keep lots of tabs open for research or planning, this could be a real game changer. You don't have to manually copy-paste details from one tab to another or keep switching back and forth. Gemini just grabs the context and organizes everything in one go. I can see this being really useful for students, travel planners, or anyone who does a lot of comparison shopping. But I'm curious to see how well it handles tricky cases, like mixing personal and work tabs, or when some sites sit behind logins. They're also adding a recall feature using Gemini, so you can just ask things like, what was the website I saw the walnut desk on last week? Or, what was that blog I read on back-to-school shopping? And it'll find it for you. That's a huge time saver for some, but potentially a privacy nightmare for others. So, I really think there should be a proper opt-out option for it. Basically, what it does is keep track of your browsing context, so you can search your own history with natural language. It's similar to what Microsoft is trying with their recall feature in Copilot Plus PCs, but having it in the browser itself makes it more accessible for everyone. That said, the privacy side of this is definitely something to keep an eye on. On top of that, Gemini is now integrated with your favorite Google Apps inside Chrome, Calendar, YouTube, Maps, and more. You can schedule meetings, check locations, and even jump to specific spots in a YouTube video just by asking Gemini. So, if you're watching a long tutorial and want to skip straight to the part about TypeScript or Go Setup, just ask, and it takes you there. Pretty awesome. And things like Dia don't have this, and neither does Comet. The integration with Google's own apps is one of the big selling points here. If you're already deep in the Google ecosystem, this just makes everything more streamlined. For example, you could be reading an email in Gmail, get a meeting invite, and add it straight to your calendar without ever leaving the tab. Or you could be watching a YouTube video and instantly jump to the right section based on a question you ask. It's the kind of feature that saves just a few clicks at a time, but over days and weeks, it really adds up. I do wonder, though, how well this will work with third-party apps, or if it's just going to stay a closed ecosystem for now. Another big update is AI mode in Google Search, now available directly from the Chrome address bar, the Omnibox. You can type longer, more complex questions, and you'll get an AI response. Plus, you can ask follow-up questions and go deeper all without leaving Chrome. It's rolling out in English in the U.S. first, but it'll expand to more languages soon. It's very similar to what Perplexity offers, but this one's built in and feels much more seamless. The fact that you can just hit the address bar, type your question, and get an AI-powered answer right alongside your regular results is really useful. It's like having a built-in research assistant I've already tried it for some coding questions and general knowledge, and the responses are pretty accurate. Of course, it depends on the model and the data it has access to, so your experience might vary. But still, for most people, this is a nice quality of life upgrade. Also, you can now ask questions about the entire page you're on, directly from the Omnibox. Chrome will suggest relevant questions based on the page context, and you'll get an AI overview from search right alongside, with the ability to keep asking follow-up questions in AI mode. So, if you're reading a really long blog post and want more info about a specific section, just ask, and Chrome will help. That's especially useful for dense documentation or technical articles where you might not understand the jargon 
or maybe you just want a quick summary of a section. This is very similar to what ArcMax and some extensions already offer. But again, having it built into Chrome makes it way easier to use. I think this is going to help students and developers a lot when they're learning new tech or trying to get up to speed on something quickly. So, to sum up, Google's basically turned Chrome into an AI-powered productivity hub. You get Gemini for summarizing and explaining content, agentic browsing for automating tedious tasks, multi-tab context awareness, recall for past browsing, deep Google app integration, AI-powered search, and page Q&A, better security, and smarter notifications. It's sort of a catch-up move for their browser in the new AI era. However, it's still early days for some of these. Agentic browsing isn't fully live yet, and there are still privacy questions about how much data is being processed. But overall, the direction is promising, and that's why I wanted to talk about it. I mean, I liked it. I've been using some of these features in the Canary build of Chrome, and they really do make a difference in day-to-day -day browsing. There are still some rough edges, and not everything is as smooth as you'd like, but that's pretty typical for a big rollout like this. Google tends to iterate quickly, so I expect things will improve in the next few months. If you're into trying new features, I'd say give it a shot and see how it fits into your workflow. If you're more privacy conscious, Make sure to check the settings and keep an eye on what data is being collected. Please subscribe to the channel and share your thoughts too. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.